Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This is a follow-up video to where we talked about the anatomy and physiology of the stomach. When I talked about the chemical digestion in the stomach, I really just focused on the proteins. And it's true that pepsin is very important in the degradation of proteins in the stomach. Um, I kind of got a little carried away with that, and I forgot to actually mention the fact that we actually have some other digestion that occurs in the stomach, and that is through the activity of two lipases. Okay? So I mentioned there were specific cells called chief cells, They're, these are these pink ones right here, that release pepsinogen into the stomach. Of course, the stomach acid is what activates pepsinogen into the active pepsin, and then pepsin is able to degrade proteins into smaller peptides and amino acids. That digestion is, of course, completed in the small intestine by both pancreatic enzymes, proteases, and brush border proteases. But there's also lipid digestion, and those are through the activities of lingual lipase and gastric lipase. Now, the gastric lipase is an enzyme that's secreted by the chief cells of the stomach. So the chief cells secrete both pepsinogen and this gastric lipase. So let's take a look at what the gastric lipase actually does. So we have triglycerides. These have not been digested yet at all. So when they get into the stomach from the bolus and get mixed in with the chyme and so forth, the triglycerides are going to be degraded into diglycerides and free fatty acids. The whole goal is to get rid of all of the triglycerides and break them down into individual free fatty acids. Okay? Um, now, the diglycerides can be degraded further um, by gastric lipase and other lipases later in the small intestine, but we want to hydrolyze off all of these fatty acids, and there's three per triglyceride. So gastric lipase um, is going to play a role in that. And gastric lipase being active in the stomach, that's going to imply that gastric lipase is activated by low pH. Okay. So once gastric lipase is squirted into the small intestine with the rest of the chyme, it will be inactivated. Okay. But in the stomach, it breaks down triglycerides into free fatty acids. Now, in the oral cavity video, I mentioned that there were glands called intrinsic salivary glands. They were actually part of the mucosal lining of the oral cavity, and they secrete saliva. And within that saliva, we had this enzyme called lingual lipase. And lingual lipase was not active in the mouth because it requires a low pH in order to become activated. Therefore, this lingual lipase, once it gets to the stomach, it becomes active. And it really has the exact same function as gastric lipase. It's going to break down triglycerides into free fatty acids. One key about triglycerides is we're not going to be able to absorb them in this form, even though overall, relative to most polymers, they're pretty small. In fact, we really don't even consider triglycerides polymers. We still can't absorb them in this form. We're going to have to break off all three of their fatty acids, and then we'll be able to absorb the individual fatty acids. So we have a twofold lipase activity in the stomach. Gastric lipase from the chief cells, and then the lingual lipase that just came from the bolus of food um, in the mouth and was, of course, secreted by those intrinsic salivary glands. Now, it's not to say that these two lipases alone will complete the digestion. We're probably going to still have some triglycerides, some diglycerides, and maybe even some monoglycerides. So when all of this, which is going to be in the chyme of the stomach, when it's squirted into the small intestine, which is where we're going in the next set of videos, we'll actually see that uh, lipid digestion or triglyceride digestion is actually completed in the small intestine. Okay? Just like protein digestion is finished there and carbohydrate digestion. But we at least in the stomach get a lot of this lipid digestion and of course protein digestion. All right? So I just wanted to clear that up that we actually have both protein digestion and triglyceride digestion in the stomach, but it will be completed in the small intestine, which we're actually going to go to in the next video. So this was just a follow-up to the previous video. Hopefully I cleared up anything if you learned something different from that video, that of course we have lipid digestion here as well. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.